Okay, YouTube. Since I couldn't find one, I decided to make my own review of the Epiphone 1958 Goth Explorer. I literally got this about, I would say about maybe two hours ago. And I gotta tell you guys, I'm loving it like nobody's business. I'm going to get the complaint out of the way now. This thing dies in the neck, if you can see it, badly. So if you can, move the strap button probably to the underside of the neck where you play, or maybe even the back. Your choice, really. Um, other than that, um, word of caution, get strap locks. I recommend using shawlers because they work great. I have yet to put them in because, well, like I said, I got this two hours ago and I'm more worried about playing it than it's on shot because I'm sitting down. Okay, back to the specs. Um, let's see, we got 22 frets, gives you a D scale, Grover tuners, made by Epiphone. Really, same thing as Gibson for about $1,000 cheaper. Really, ask around, it's, it's actually pretty true. You have your three-way toggle switch right here. It actually works pretty good. Right here you have the bridge. The combination of the two. And then the neck. And you have tone control one, volume control, tone control two. And let me turn up the volume a little for you guys. This little baby comes with a kill switch and tone control two right behind the volume. So hit it. And just kill to your heart's content, really. Uh, let's see. Mahogany fretboard. You have XII, the Roman numeral for 12, and the 12th fret inlay. The rest of it, you have the dots within the neck, and that's just about it. So if you're used to depending on the dots, you're going to have to learn to get used to it without them. Because I'll tell you, it's thrown me a few times. Uh, let's see, uh, 1.68 inches in the nut, very good wood, the body style is skating right now, uh, okay, so you have two Alnico classic humbuckers, and let's get into hearing it, it overall it plays really smooth too, alright, this is going to be coming through a generic clean setting, of which I made my own creation, on my Line 6 Spider 475, I'm going to be plugging in with a Monster Pro Line cable. And i got to tell you guys, when you plug it in, this cable really stays in. You, you just saw how difficult it actually is to take it out. It's not just a casual in and out. This thing is going to stay in, period. Okay, well, here you have your clean setting with the tone pots pulled all the way back to zero, but the volume max with the bridge. Here it is with pot one, pump to ten. to 10 and I'm sure you could hear the already the boost that pot 2 is providing A little kill switch action there pot 1 pulled all the way back to 0 while pot 2 still remains at 10 Okay, here's going to be the middle selector between the two. Both pots killed at zero, but the volume still remaining at max. Ah, I guess you can't do that. By taking pot one all the way out, 
it loses all sense of uh, volume. There you go. You learned something as well as I did on the fly. Okay, so this is part one. Boost it all the way. Tone part two and tone part one. Yeah, you need tone part one if you're going to use the metal. And this is purely in the neck pickups. Or let's just say pick up. Yep. If you're going to use the first one, you have to have tone part one on. So, a little word of caution. Mm -hmm. And just for you guys' as a reference, that is not actually the volume. second one is, but in this case, this one moves to the volume, so it's in other ways are volume and tone controls. Just saying. Huh. Yeah, go figure. Okay, so this is with Tone Pot Volume X. Part two at max along with tone part one. And you know, there's your basic clean setting with kill switch. Um, okay, let's go to a drive setting. And instead of tweaking these like I normally would, I'm just well. Sorry guys, I'm a little lazy right now and I'm just so stoked to play this. Yeah, I said stoked. You got a problem with it? I don't care. I'm a retro dude. Alright, anyway, back to the review. Sorry. This is going to be through the bridge. And I'm going to play a little, little my own work. You know, let me know if you like it. As you can tell, there's really good sustain on it. And from what I can hear so far, just from noodling around earlier, I find that the good sweet spot is probably in the middle of the neck for the... That's just where the guitar will shine, in my opinion. So if you're working with solo work, try and work it somewhere in the middle of the neck if possible. If you have to, work it up front if you want, go for it. I mean... You're the guitarist, not me. Well, I am too, but it's your work. 
Okay, here is distortion through the middle two. Again, same riff. And here it is through the neck. As you can hear, the harmonics ring out really nicely. And distortion is good through all the pickups, but the high, but the farther up on the neck you go, it's a lot more bass end, and it's creamy. I like it. It's it's just it's just nice. I'm sorry, I have no other way to describe it. It's just nice. Uh, I'm gonna play it through my own clean setting, but I'm gonna play Metallica's "Welcome Home Sanitarium" again. Their work, not mine. The riff I did before, that was my own creation. This one is Metallica's. So, copyright people, suck it, alright? I'm going to show you how the harmonics work in the intro. And for this, I'm using the next pickup because that's where I feel it sounds best. Untangled from the chord here. Sorry, and I'm gonna play. Eh, screw it. I'll, I'll I'll play Master of Puppets. Just well, everybody knows the song. That's the only reason why. <laughs> Okay, so that was the small, well, a mock version of Master of Puppets. You know? I'm not trying to actually do it perfectly. I'm just doing it so you guys can get the tone. So critics, you're wasting your time. Yeah, that was the Master riff, and I'm gonna play the clean part for you. I'm going to get ravaged for that, I know. I'm sorry, I'll do it again. See, I know how to do it. Don't judge. And here's going to be the master solo to show you what it sounds like. Okay, I don't feel like doing games so well, I'm just trying to keep the time down on this. Uh, I suppose I should cut it short, but um, no, I'm just going to show you the tuning for this, and I'm going to use a uh, side tuner, that way you guys can hear how, uh, you can you can see how little it takes to turn these Grover tuners, beautiful by the way, I'd recommend them if you don't have them already. And I'm going to use my Korg PC-1 Pitch Clip. 
I bought this for $21.54 walking out the door, just in case you're wondering. It's very effective, actually, but I, I'm just, yeah, just going to tune it and show you guys how beautiful it is. It doesn't even take that much. It really, that's why I'm going so slow with this. I mean, you try and make a big movement, and the string is just going to fling. For, if you guys are wondering, this guitar is literally straight out of the box. I didn't bother replacing the strings or anything. The only thing I actually did was just tune them, and they were just tuned terribly. Although, I will have to say this. When I, when I was checking the tuning to see if they had done it right with this tuner, my E string was in B. So for those of you guys who know you're going down by the sick puppies, this guitar can handle the drop tunings really well. So, just, just saying. If that's your game, you're fine. You see how subtle that is? That's just... This is just a really well-manufactured guitar. I, I'm completely in love with this thing. I, I, I've named her Erica because I take a liking to naming my guitars. This is even actually the American made model too. I feel really happy about that. Well, there you go, YouTube. There's your 1958 Epiphone Goth Explorer review because no one else really does it. They just seem to play riffs. Why? I honestly don't know. Well, enjoy, guys. Um, oh, yeah, final thoughts. Um, I paid $433 for this guitar online. That includes tax with standard free shipping. I also put a two-year warranty on it, and I got the strap lock. So doing all of that with just standard shipping, I ended up paying $530 American. What that would be in Great British Pounds or any other type of currency, I honestly have no idea. I don't feel like thinking that much right now. But I'm actually going to start doing a lot of my other videos with this guitar because, well, I just love her so much. Thanks for watching, and be sure to watch my other videos and tell your friends. And, well, like or give a thumbs up instead of rating, and be sure to subscribe to my channel. Thank you.